This video is brought to you by 3, bringing you 4G at no extra cost and some exclusive deals over at btech.com. What's the most premium tablet out right now? Well, on paper, it's probably the Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2. Aside from the 12.2 inches of screen, which has a 2K resolution, you've also got an S Pen for 10 at 24 levels of pressure sensitivity. On top of that, you've got an octa-core processor and Hancom Office, which is a pretty comprehensive office suite. This tablet looks great. Now that it's dropped to around 500 pounds at certain retailers, it's looking much more affordable too. But would we recommend it? Well, this is our full review, so watch on to find out. If you're considering getting a Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2, the odds are it's because of that really large, gorgeous display. That means you've also got a really large tablet on your hands. Realistic for one-handed use? Yeah, for about 10 minutes. Then you'll definitely want to flip over to two hands or swap hands to give the other one a bit of a rest. As far as key design highlights go, it really is the thinness that wins it on this one. Because the tablet's surface area is so big, the thinness, eight millimeters, gives the illusion it's actually thinner than it is. And it definitely works well at looking premium, despite the fact it's plastic. In fact, because it's plastic, it isn't all that heavy. So we're quite happy Samsung has gone traditional with this one. As far as design highlights go, you've also got a front facing two megapixel camera above the screen, two capacitor buttons either side of the physical home button below. On the right hand side of the tablet at the top side is an S Pen holder, as you can see. You can um, also find one side of the stereo speakers below that, micro USB 3 port and a micro SD card slot underneath a flap. That faux chrome trimming extends across the base with no highlights but when you hit the left hand side you can see a 3.5 mil headphone jack and part two of the stereo speakers up at the top infrared blaster and you've also got a micro uh, sorry a volume rocker and a power button while flipping the tablet around is that camera rear facing 8 megapixel camera and flash as well as a Samsung insignia you can see you've got that dappled plastic finish and faux leather stitching generally we're not fans of the faux leather stitching but we do quite like the dappled plastic and indeed it works well on this device so all in all the design gets a thumbs up from us largely based on the fact it's actually manageable despite being so big the 2560 by 1600 resolution is shown off to perfection on the super clear LCD display Samsung loads on the 12.2. If we bring it closer into frame, you can see with a pixel density of 247 PPI, every one of those pixels is taken full advantage of. Opening the Kindle for Samsung application, you can also see um, the smallest typeface available. Serif text still looks incredibly, incredibly good. The serifs don't crisp up too much by any means jumping out of that and we can also take a look inside the gallery for example and this is a picture we took on the camera and punchy vibrant greens the reds also look very very good as well um, and generally the viewing experience if you're watching movies is super super immersive and if you're just reading ebooks the white balance is pretty on point too viewing angles are strong the only thing we would say blacks aren't all that deep if you're reading this thing at night the against a black backdrop the blacks will emit a little more light than we're used to seeing from samsung devices but that is just a minor gripe this is generally speaking the best display on any tablet that we've seen to date. The user interface is where things start to fall apart a little bit. Generally speaking, it's a good start with Android 4.4.2, access to the Google Play Store, for example. You've got your pull-down notifications tray, obviously an applications tray as well, and you can throw widgets on there as well. So anyone who's used Android will be able to pick this thing up and get going. But Samsung's included a secondary user interface called My Magazine UX, and you can add and remove panels, for example, and populate them with a whole bunch of other stuff. And we're not really all that sure what this actually does offer in terms of value adds. Sure it offers a visually richer experience um, than that of the regular Android UI. You can populate the, with social media content for example so we can throw some YouTube tiles on here um, and we can add a few others for example just quickly arts and culture Let's make that take up two spaces and one more we can throw business on there. There you go. So if we, for example, jump out of that, we have to refresh them. And this might seem like, okay, you have to refresh them, but we have to refresh each one of these tiles every single time we want the news refreshed on it. 
So as you can see, it takes a bit of time. It asks you for account details, etc. Even though we've already signed into YouTube on the YouTube app. So it really does disrupt the experience. Now, um, as far as other elements go, we feel this whole user interface kind of slows everything down a little bit too much. It detracts from the user experience more than it adds. We'd much rather just do what we do and have our regular RSS reader at the top in our notifications while telling us every now and then when there is news in. The S Planner widget on regular Samsung devices devices is so incredibly good. We don't feel that the new S Planner adds anything, so generally speaking, my magazine UX, sorry Samsung, has failed to win us over. In the same breath, if you were to scrub out my magazine UX, the general Android experience is strong. Considering the three gigabytes of RAM on here, it does slow down a little bit more than we would like it to, but that's a given with the 2560 by 1600 display, and of course, the heavy, heavy load of touch whiz Samsung throws over the top. Now it's time to talk about multitasking and in addition to the standard multitasking options that Android offers, you've also got a Samsung multitasking option and this allows you to drag multiple apps into various corners of your window, taking full advantage of that large display. So if we drag in Hancom Word for example, then we can throw a gallery in there too and swipe in there. We can even drag my files and we can drag that on either quadrant of the display, do it on the left hand side so that finally we can drag Esno into the bottom right hand side. And obviously whichever window is active, you can tap the center button and you can control the options for. You can rotate where various windows appear and on top of that, you can also drag to give different amounts of precedence to different applications. Realistically, we use this about three times in the three, four weeks weeks that we've had the device to review. Um, and we found it relatively useful, mainly for things like recipes. For example, we had a recipe converter on one side and a web page open on the other with the actual recipe on it. But generally speaking, it isn't make or break, just nice to have. Now it's time to talk about why this thing's actually called a note, and it's all about that S Pen. The S Pen packs 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity, or at least controls them. It's a pretty fiddly device when you use it for more than half an hour, but for bouts of usage of 20 minutes or so, perfectly comfortable. You can get a adapter to make it a little bit bigger and more bearable for longer periods. It can navigate the UI like a finger would and it can also preview stuff. So jumping into the gallery, for example, if we jump out of the picture, we can preview other pictures. It's also got a whole load of apps we'll come on to later, but you may have noticed when we took the S Pen out of the holder, it revealed this air command option. Um, if we hover over them, we can see you've got action memo, um, scrapbooker, air screen write, S Finder and Pen Window. If we type action memo, tap action memo, we can write the name John, very messy handwriting, 0936412, and then wrap around that text, press the contact button, and then it will actually add all that information on to a contact, um, which is quicker than going through your address book. So we actually really found this uh, useful. Um, funnily enough, we thought they were all gonna be gimmicks. Generally though, most of the rest are, um, if we swipe out, we can also access that air command menu by tapping the button while hovering over the screen. So Scrapbook has sent stuff to Scrapbook. Screenwrite is cool, it takes a screenshot and lets you write over it. S-Finder lets you search your entire tablet. And finally, Pen Window, probably the most gimmicky of the lot draw a rectangle, and then you have access to some key shortcuts. Um, generally though, we really like the S Pen largely based on the application support that Samsung imbues on their Note devices. You can see S Note, for example, allows you to have various templates. We can bring that closer into frame. So you can see blank note, two column meeting note or schedule. If we jump out of that, we can actually see this is something that we've written. We actually use this to organize um, our video shooting. If we discard our changes, we can also see you've got notebooks in here and you can have multiple notebooks for various elements. And you've also uh, got the option to change the color of your notebook, the styling, and even a picture. Drag a notebook down and you can see what is inside. Um, and yeah, generally speaking, we really, really enjoy using this application as an organizational tool. As far as creativity goes, you've also got um, Sketchbook Pro preloaded on here and it's Sketchbook for Galaxy, so it's optimized for this tablet. Opening it up and we can see this is a drawing we've actually um, been doing ourselves and you can see you've got control over things like layers. You can turn off various layers and um, you've got a multitude of brushes as well, not to mention options to change color palettes 
and of course, like we said, layers, but the layers can also work from photos. So if you import a photo, you can actually trace over it. Really nice touches. You can export your photos or your um, doodles as PDF, uh, sorry, as PSD files as well. So you can get started on here and then carry on in Photoshop when you reach your computer, if you're indeed one of those creative types. Generally, therefore, the S Pen adds loads of functionality to a certain audience. If you're not a huge fan of writing on the go, um, or if you're not big into your doodling, then it might be a little bit overkill for you, but doesn't take away from the fact you've got that gorgeous, gorgeous screen on there, giving the Note 12.2 plenty of appeal standalone. We can't look at the user interface without talking about productivity, and it really makes sense we start with S Planner. This is something that we've seen before. Obviously, with the S Pen, you can hover over elements to get a preview. Again, stuff we've seen before is um, the ability to draw all over your calendar. Works very well for people who are visual. If you're indeed in a meeting and want to draw on it, go for it. But that's not the highlight. The highlight is Hancom Office. Hancom Office is the most fully fledged office suite that we've seen on an Android device to date. If we open up a review we wrote, for example, you can very easily see um, browsing through the UI, you've got a very familiar, almost Microsoft Office-esque ribbon view up at the top. You've also got a really good way of entering text. You can either do it through this UI, or you can dock your S Pen and you've got a full keyboard up here. And this includes a number row up at the top, a control key for cutting, copying, and pasting as well. Um, it's really comfortable to type on by comparison to smaller devices, but it has to be said, it isn't a patch on a physical keyboard. You can get a Logitech keyboard dock for this. It costs in the region of 100 pounds, and we haven't tried it out. If you have, ping us any thoughts in the comments section below. While still not quite as good as a uh, Windows device in terms of office support, you can do things like export to as PDFs, etc. So really impressed by Samsung and indeed Hancom for coming together to deliver the best Android tablet for Office functionality. Finally, it's time to talk about multimedia. And oh my goodness, this thing is stupendous. If we pull in closer to frame, open up our videos folder that we've created, we can open up MX Player, show you a 2K clip that we're playing back and it looks phenomenal. You can see it's a time-lapse video right here. Um, if we pull back a little bit, um, you should be able to make out um, detail across the stars is just stupendous. Audience looks incredible right there. And generally speaking, it's hard to argue with what we see right now. And that is a brilliant, brilliant immersive device. If you have your own movie files, throw them on here at full resolution and you will be absolutely engulfed by them. You've also got good speakers good stereo speakers either side, and obviously MX Play gives you brightness control. We had it on full brightness. Naturally, this being Android, you can also get Netflix, iPlayer on here, as well as other great video um, tools like lynda.com too. If we jump out of that, we can also see the 32 gigabytes of onboard memory will be perfect for things like Spotify. You can obviously um, export your audio via Bluetooth or the 3.5 mil headphone jack on here. And we've already covered ebook reading when we spoke about the screen experience, which really on only leaves one thing, and that's gaming. Gaming on the Note 12.2 is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you've got fantastic hardware, big screen, high resolution, powerful processor. It can handle any game out right now. Generally though, for people with smaller hands and for games where the controls are on different extremities of the display, it can be a little bit awkward to use. We really would recommend getting a gamepad for this potentially if you find a way of propping it up like using a Logitech keyboard dock. Um, if you don't want to use a gamepad, most games will still play really comfortably um, for the most part if they're mobile optimized, so they won't require too much travel across the screen. The only one we really had problems with was King of Fighters, but apps like Crazy Taxi, Jetpack Joyride, Rayman Jungle Run all worked a treat. The camera on the Note Pro 12.2 doesn't disappoint. Most tablets tend to have pretty terrible cameras, but the eight megapixel sensor can definitely get a good shot out in decent lighting. It's also got a flash to help it along in low light. Low light shots are relatively noisy and the flash shots are low on detail by comparison to say, its smartphone counterpart, the S5, but it still produces shots that look very good for the most part, which is more than can be said for most tablets. The range of shooting modes also 
or help it along. Beauty Face, for example, actually manages to smooth out skin in a relatively realistic way. Um, and the Panorama produces a great panoramic shot with oodles of detail, again, in good light. You've also got Best Face, Sound and Shot, Best Photo, Drama, Rich Tone HDR, Eraser, and a Sports Mode 2. It's good for a tablet, though we'd still recommend you use your smartphone if you've got it to hand. Powering along the Note 12.2 is an octa-core processor. Well, technically speaking, it's two quad-core processors, a 1.9 gigahertz and a 1.3 gigahertz processor, the latter for more menial tasks. Generally, performance throughout is really, really good, except for the user interface. What I mean is applications run brilliantly. 3D games, the more intensive stuff you'd expect to stutter doesn't, whereas a My Magazine UX occasionally stutters, flipping from portrait to landscape occasionally just takes longer than you'd expect it to, um, and opening up certain apps that are multitasking as well belies the fact you've got three gigabytes of RAM in here. Available either with Wi-Fi only or with Wi-Fi plus LTE, the LTE version will set you back around £100 extra. It's also available in 16 or 32 gigabyte variants, both of which have micro SD expandability under the flap on the right hand side. You've also got micro USB 3 for data charging at super fast speeds, while up at the top is that infrared blaster, which paired with the Samsung Watch On app acts as a brilliant TV companion. We've got our remote controls expanded, but you can see we've got an electronic program guide right here. And of course you can expand your remote control to control both your TV and your set top box. Setup is very easy and we found Found the control worked very well, plenty powerful. So all in all, as far as connections goes, you are well served. The only real notable omission being NFC, and that's not really something that we need all that much on our tablet. The final hurdle is always battery, and it wasn't really too much of a hurdle at all for the Note Pro 12.2. 9,500 milliamps means you're easily gonna get a full day out of this thing, probably two, if you're using it intensively. In fact, 11 hours of video playback is a quoted time, and our tests prove this wasn't too far off the mark at all. Most of that power is obviously gonna go towards keeping that screen alive, so when you haven't, aren't using the screen in standby, this thing will last for days and days and days. So there you have it, the Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2. Gorgeous screen, really good design as well from Samsung. The S Pen means you're gonna have a brilliant experience if you wanna draw with S Note and Sketchbook Pro on here. On top of that, it's great for handwriting input and Hancom Office means you've got the best office suite on any device on this one. There are a few letdowns though. The user interface just stutters too much. TouchWiz is way too heavy and my magazine UX does not save it from being so. That said, with great battery life and great connectivity as well. This thing gets a massive thumbs up and is actually one of the only tablets on the scene with a camera that is actually worth using. So probably our favorite Android tablet out right now, if we're completely honest. Hopefully you've enjoyed our review. If you have, make sure you click the like button below, share this video and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out btech.com as well. Over there you can find the latest in smartphones, tablets, and some exclusive deals as well. Thanks for watching. At the top of the screen is where you can find three hand-picked videos for your viewing pleasure. On the left is where you can subscribe and on the right hand side you can find some exclusive deals if you head over to btext.com.